Well, good afternoon. You probably can tell from the light on my face that the, the sunlight is fabulous. Uh, I keep thinking when you get light like this that it's like being in Italy. You know, that kind of yellowish glow near sunset, and it's not near sunset here. But, uh, and the temperature's not bad. So, I'm out for a walk, and uh, I have a take on the vaccination of our military officers that concerns me. Now, those who have spent time in the military, who've ever gone overseas, have been injected with 20 different <laughs> needles when they do that. And uh, there's never a question raised. But there's been a command, an executive command, that everybody in the armed services uh, be vaccinated. And yet, some have not been vaccinated. It's like a silent resistance, a protest to being vaccinated that parallels what we've seen among those who are not wary, but who just refuse and they claim because of a freedom that they associate with this refusal and that they will not be vaccinated, thereby endangering all of us. And compromising the recovery from the pandemic. So my question is, as in the civilian population, we have those who are refusing for political reasons. Does this reflect a lack of loyalty within our armed services that should concern us? Now, in past times when there have been different resistances and so forth, We've studied it and analyzed what to do about it. I would hope that the Pentagon is looking at this and that we don't have some high level holdover from Trump who is doing the opposite. Now, why would I even think such a thing? Well, because we have this fella, Phil Waldron, who figures in the PowerPoint presentation. And the rule of thumb I have here uh, he's a retired army colonel, and he was used, apparently, his cyber security expertise. He was used to brief people, including Meadows, chief of staff to the president, Trump at the time, but also senators and others. And, and among them specified was Senator Johnson, who was one of the people who seemed to follow the prescription of the PowerPoint when he was supporting the view that uh, we could audit the vote and delay the vote absent any cause, in fact, that said there was any fraud in the election. So uh, this guy has military connections and the PowerPoint talks about using various arms and services and intelligence in support of Trump remaining in office despite the fact that he lost the office. This has got to be concerning. Now, I don't want to get ahead of the House committee because they're, I think, voting this evening on contempt for Meadows, and that makes sense to me. And there will probably be reports and documents that outline why they think they should do what they're doing. But my concern goes beyond this. In terms of remedy, let's prepare for the worst case scenario. If we lose the midterms, which would be November, toward the end of next year, what happens to the investigation? What constructively occurs? They write a report, they complain, the new Congress disbands the select committee looking into the January 6th insurrection, and there are no remedies for what they are already finding now in the period from September to December 2021. So what can we do and what should we do? These are animals you hear in the background. <laughs> here, here's, a, here's this guy over here, look at this. This poor little guy, can you see him? Right? Doesn't want to talk anymore. 
So here, he's not mine. He's a neighbor's. The, uh, so my concern is you have a com- committee and the committee uh, doesn't act and then they're disbanded without having acted. And they've interviewed right now as I'm speaking to you 300 witnesses and they have witnesses lined up to speak and they're proposing hearings in January. Well, they can get through all of that. But at the end of the day, do we want only uh, a bunch of legislative reforms proposed? Do we want only a list of wrongdoing by people that doesn't prompt a reckoning? We can see from the Trumpeteers that they don't really seem to care what the risks are. They are like organized crime in that sense. They accept as part of their job the risk that they may go to jail. But they also believe, I think, that if they succeed and the, and Trump is installed again or they take over the Congress, they can make this all go away. So that's our challenge. So what is the answer? The answer is to have a real prosecutor because the prosecutor will not be substituted in the midterms. The prosecutor will at least be able to continue for the term of office of Biden. And when I say the prosecutor, I mean to say not necessarily just one prosecutor. I mean a whole team of prosecutors. I mean a strike force, a strike force to get at the fact that we have an enemy within that tried to overturn our government and now we're fleshing out what we already knew. We knew that these guys had committed this crime. We saw it ourselves. We saw what they said. And now we're just getting more and more evidence. This is like the two impeachments, a remedy in the impeachments that failed because it was a numbers game based on who in the Senate would actually punish a president who tried to usurp his his legitimate ability to govern by lying and thieving and ultimately in his second impeachment by trying to overthrow the government with the insurrection that occurred. So, what am I saying? Simply, misdemeanors for failing to answer questions by the House are not enough. We have to have a prosecution for the high crimes and misdemeanors of Trump, treated as seditious conspiracy, which is a statute that I think has been satisfied. But there have been lies and there's been assisting, inciting to riot. There's been all manner of offenses beyond the rioters that made this possible in the West Wing, in our intelligence establishment, perhaps in the military, and certainly on the Hill and the House and the Senate. There have been civilians who have supported this, including the wife of uh, Associate Justice Thomas. The nation is in a very precarious position. And if we don't act, we will regret at our leisure as we see our democracy compromised and perhaps destroyed by these autocrats. So I, I hope that, uh, I hope you see the line of argument I'm making. I know a lot of you from the responses I get are exactly in that place. How can these guys do the crimes they are and not be required to face up to the punishment any one of us would get if we even came close to this. It is not acceptable that these people should be above the law, that these people think they could say or do anything to our country and ultimately compromise our freedoms and our ability to live free in a nation that fought and gave up blood and treasure in order to have the rights that these guys just push away with the back of their hand. So that's all I have to say today. (laughs) Sorry, I can't say anything happier, but we're in a difficult time. So I'll talk to you tomorrow. All the best. Bye-bye.